So today we're doing a cocktail that's so secret, its recipe had been buried for nearly 60 years. Today we're doing The Missionary's Downfall. Today's cocktail is gonna be blended, and so I wanna use this Nutribullet because you can use a Vitamix or like a more powerful blender, but I think this actually does a better job, and it's cheaper. And it's just so much easier to put it all in here and then just, you know, blend it. So we're gonna take half a cup of mint leaves, and the recipe said half a cup of mint leaves packed. So I kind of packed them in there a little bit. I think it's a little bit over half a cup, I think it'd be fine. And then we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of honey syrup. So originally Don the Beachcomber did a honey mix for this cocktail, which is a one to one water honey ratio. But to me, that's just too thin and you're not gonna feel the honey in it at all. So I'm doing a three to one, like that's my normal three to one ratio. And three quarters of an ounce of lime juice, one ounce pineapple juice, half an ounce of creme de peche, peach liqueur, an ounce and a half of Cuban or Cuban style light rum. So by Cuban style, we would mean like Bacardi, which used to be Cuban, but is now Puerto Rican, but it's still kind of in that same vein. And then one cup of pebble or crushed ice. Add it to our thing, blend it all up. So it has this nice smoothie consistency. Now, normally this would go into a snifter, but I decided it was, I'm gonna put it into a poco grande glass. And then we're just gonna fill it up like so. And then last but not least, we're gonna take some big bushy mint sprig here. And if you wanted to, you could do a little pineapple wedge, although I'm not gonna do that today. We'll get a little slappy poo in the crushy pants, stick it in there, voila, there you have the missionary's downfall. Oh my God, that's heaven, it's heaven. You know, here's the thing. This is the very first time that I ever made this drink. And I will say that I had my doubts because you would think that when you shred up the mint that way that you'll get all the chlorophyll from the leaves, right? And it would be very, you know, minty, but vegetable-y. And, and, and it's, that is not the case. This is actually really fantastic. It's got a nice juxtaposition between the honey syrup, creme de peche, and the pineapple. But what's nice is that the mint is really prevalent, but it had, but it hits you later. So it's not like super minty up front. It's really tropically up front, and then you have this nice like kind of back mint, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Back mint. Mm, that is fantastically good. It's gonna be hard not to finish that before we uh, do the thumbnail. And it's very, very good. The story of this cocktail goes that it was created by Don the Beachcomber. It was very popular in the 1940s, but it could have been created as early as 1937. And it was a closely guarded secret for 60 years. Nobody knew the recipe. And then an enterprising bartender named, uh, I said enterprising bartender a lot today. Anyway, uh, a very, but, but he is enterprising. So an enterprising bartender named Jeff Beach Bunbury decided that he was gonna find out what the recipe for this drink was. At some point, he found an ex-employee of Don the Beachcombers that worked there for 40 years and convinced him to give up the goods on this cocktail. And so he got the original recipe, or the original recipe as we know it, the only recipe we're gonna have for it anyway. It is a fantastic drink. It is so nicely balanced, this drink. It is fantastic. So do yourself a favor and make yourself a missionary's downfall. Wow, that's, ooh, that's, that's full. So is this like a mint smoothie? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I did. You know, this is really annoying. The only drawback to this thing is that the little ring, the seal ring comes out of this every now and again if you don't screw it in. Get in there, you fucker. Get in there. Ah, so annoying. That's a stupid design. So today we're doing a cocktail. So today we're doing a cocktail that is so secret the recipe has. So today we're doing a cocktail that's recipe. So today we're doing a cocktail that's so secret it rec is to use this vitamin. It's not a Vitamix. No, nope. it is a Nutribullet. Yeah. Okay. I was like, did I put that to the three quarter mark? No. Um, okay. But they do. <laughs> they do, yeah. <laughs> no, it was, uh, well, I, now I don't know. Well, because you, well, it's funny, because this is called a missionary's downfall. Right. But then you were like, did you see murder, the mur murder of, Mor what was it called? Uh, murder Among Murder Mormons. Among Mormons, which is literally a missionary's downfall. Right. 
Um, no, well, now it's like, how much should I spoil on the thing? But uh, it made me think, uh, what if- Just say spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. If you guys are watching uh, Murder Among Mormons, definitely tune out now. Okay, right. now spoil it. I don't really care. So the, the guy that it's about, was this like rare books thing. He found all kinds of old manuscripts. Oh yes, and he was forging. And he's right? forging everything. He was yeah. forging like uh, plates from like the original Mormon guy. What's his name? John Smith or whatever, the yeah. original Mormon. And like he was, he was like, and he got a little too greedy and like started finding all the stuff that people were asking for. He's like, oh, can you find this thing? And like, yeah, probably. And then right, and that's how find. he got caught, yeah. He's uh, an idiot. He also like, uh, <laughs> he also uh, almost sold to the Congress, of, the Library of Congress, the first printed, the first an oath of a free man, which yes, is like the first yes. printed American anything. Right. And uh, they almost bought it. And then because of the Mormon thing, it got, yeah. It got blown up and he didn't actually sell it. But what if a GF Beach Bomberry didn't actually GF? discover anything? Oh. He just you know, like, Jeff. He, Jeff, yeah. Did you say GF? No, Jeff oh, Beach yeah. Bomberry. What if he just forged all of it? He just made up all these recipes and he just pretended like he, he found it. It would be a scandal in the right. tropical drinks community if it that would. happened. Yeah. I don't think that he did that though. Nobody um, thought the Mormon. There died. are too many people involved though, because he's like, I went to this particular person and calls them out by name. Mm -hmm. I went to this particular person to ask their family or to ask them right. to look in the, you know, so like he found like he went to the, the families of specific bartenders and found their actual notebooks and stuff. So he could be making that up, but then don't you think the families of those people? I mean, unless they're all dead or something, but like uh, if they're alive, then they would just call it out. So it'd be like too easy to trace. I don't know. Maybe, maybe they're all in on it. It's like maybe, some maybe, maybe, maybe you think that that he, I mean, he, he would have definitely, I don't think he turned it into a lot of money like the Murder Among Mormons guy though, because I mean, like how many books do you think he sells? Like he probably, you know, he's know, made maybe. a very good reputation for himself. He, he is, yeah. He probably goes like speaking and stuff and cocktail programs and whatnot. Right. But I, I'm just wondering though, I'm just wondering, does Jeff Beach Bumberry watch this channel mm -hmm. or have or are aware of us at all? And if so, is he going to see this and then take offense to your uh, positing the query o that he only might be forging tiki ingredients? I mean, o only if just, he is, right? But I got to say, if he's making up all of these recipes, they're fantastic recipes. So mm -hmm. I mean, that's yeah. I'm in for it anyway. You know. Yeah. So there it is.